Time of flight spectrometry. Calculations. Okay, so here we have a example calculation question on time of flight. In this part, we have to calculate the mass in kilograms of one atom of titanium 49. Now we know to find the mass, all we have to do is moles times MR. We've already been given the MR, it's 49. However, we haven't been given the moles. Instead, we've been given the number of particles. In this case, we have one atom. So we can use another equation to work out how many moles we have if we have number of particles. And that is the following. Number of moles is equal to number of particles divided by Avogadro's constant. So in this case, it's going to be 1 over Avogadro's constant. And we can use this number of moles in the equation here. So we're just going to times the answer, we won't round it, and that will give us the following value for mass. Now this mass, remember, is going to be in grams. The question wants it in kilograms, so we're going to divide by 1000, and we're going to get this. And this is the final answer. Now from this question, we can derive an important equation that we can use throughout time of flight questions. So to work out the mass, of an atom in kilograms, we can simply just do 1 over Avogadro's constant times by the MR of the atom divided by 1000. The 1000 is there so that the answer finally is in kilograms. In this case, we used 49 as the MR. And if you put this into your calculator, you should get the same answer as we did before. So make a note of this equation. Of course, in this question, we had one atom. However, they might ask you, how about if you have three atoms or two atoms? All you have to do is just change the number. That's it. Okay, moving on to the next part. Here's where time of flight questions can get a bit tricky. But before we attempt the question, let's quickly visualize what's going on in a time of flight spectrometer. This is an oversimplification of the machine. This is the flight tube, which is the longest part of the machine, and sometimes we're asked to calculate the length of the tube. Now remember, we have particles or isotopes of different elements in the machine. Over here, they get accelerated by an electric field and they all gain the same amount of kinetic energy. After this, they move into the flight tube and separate. At the end, they hit the detector and this creates a current. We saw that the isotopes, despite having the same amount of kinetic energy, took different amounts of time crossing the flight tube. The lighter ones of course move faster than the heavy ones. This time is known as the time of flight. And again, this is something we have to calculate in some questions. Okay, if you want, you can pause the question and have a go. Now, in this question, we have two different isotopes of titanium, 49 and 47. And we've been asked to calculate the time of flight of the 47 isotope. Now to answer this question, we're going to have two different methods. I'll show you both ways in case you might need to use one or the other in a potential question. So here's the first way. The first thing we're going to do is write down the two isotopes, titanium 49 and 47. Then we're going to write the equation for kinetic energy, which is half times mass in kilograms, times velocity squared. And we're also going to write down velocity is equal to distance over time. We want to work out the time for titanium 47. So to work it out, we need to know velocity of 47 and the distance of the tube. We're going to use the kinetic energy formula to work out velocity. So after rearranging, we get velocity equals the following. 
At the bottom we have mass. And if you remember, we said we can work out mass by using the equation that you should have written down, which was 1 over Avogadro's constant times by the MR over 1000. In this case, the MR was 47. Now we have to work out the kinetic energy. They've already told us that in the question, it says the kinetic energy of an ion. Notice here, they don't specify a 47 or a 49. Because remember, all the ions have the same kinetic energy. So, this is the kinetic energy of both 47 and 49. So we can use that here. That gives us the following value for the velocity of titanium 47. So, we have that. Next, we have to work out distance. Next, we have to work out distance. Now, if you go back to the question, it doesn't mention the distance or the length of the flight tube anywhere. However, for some reason, they've given us the time of flight of 49. And again, remember, this energy is for 49 and for 47. So perhaps we could use 49's data to work out the distance. So we have the time for 49, and we can use this equation to work out the velocity for 49. Once we have both of those, we can then work out the distance. And because it's the same machine, the distance here will be the same as the value here. Okay, so first of all, we're going to work out velocity by doing the same way as we've done for 47. It's going to be the exact same numbers. The only difference is we're going to change the MR from 47 to 49. So that will give us a velocity of the following for 49. Okay, and as for time, if you go back, the time was the following. So we can plug that in here and multiply through to make D the subject, giving us a distance of 1.54 meters. So that's how long the flight tube was. We can plug that into here and use the velocity that we worked out before, giving us this, and then make T the subject, and finally divide them. And that gives us the time of flight for titanium 47. And we're going to round it to two sig fig. So this is one way of working out time of flight. Here's the other way. Just like before, we're going to have the two equations. And again, we want to work out time of flight of 47. So, first of all, we know that both ions have the same kinetic energy. That means I could equate these two equations. Now, I'm going to do some cancelling out. First of all, notice that there's a half on both sides. So, get rid of that. They cancel out. Now I have mv squared. Now, before you attempted to cancel out all of those, let's consider what M stands for. M stands for the mass of 49 and the mass of 47. So they're not going to be the same value. Therefore, we can't cancel it out. To work out M, we're going to use the equation that we used earlier. So on the left, we're going to use this equation and put 49. And on the right, we're going to use it and put 47. Now we can cancel out some stuff. For example, we can cancel out this on both sides. And we can also cancel out the thousands, giving us 49v squared equals 47v squared. Now, since we want to work out time, we have to think of a way that we can incorporate time into the equations above. We know that velocity equals distance over time. So we can just change velocity for distance over time. There we go. Okay, almost there. So we have time of 47 and time of 49, and we have distance. Now remember, in this method, we haven't worked out distance yet. That was in the previous way. So what would you do now? In this scenario, because we know the distance is the same on both sides, we can just call it one. This represents the distance is the same on the left and on the right. Okay, next, we're going to make T47 the subject. So first, let's open the brackets. We're going to square the top and square the bottom. 
obviously 1 squared is 1, and now we have time squared. Okay, let's bring this a bit closer. Now simplifying the fractions looks like this. Now we can just combine the left and the right. So essentially we're going to get this. Okay, and the next step, since we want to work out time, let's flip both equations. So time is on top. There. We flip the left and we flip the right. Okay, right here, I want you to make a note of this. This is a very important thing we've deduced. Whenever you have a question where you have time of one ion or isotope and you don't have the time of the other one, we could use this equation to work it out. So as a formula, we can say the time squared of x divided by the MR of x is equal to time squared of y divided by the MR of y. So write down this bottom part. Now, remember, we want to work out time of 47. So let's get rid of the squared first. We're going to square root both sides. Notice the times have removed their squares and the bottoms have become squared. That will give us the following. Then we're going to times the 47 root on the left. So the final step is to find the value for the time of 49. They told us that in the question it was 9.816 times 10 to the minus 7. So we're going to plug that in there and put this into our calculator and we should get 9.613 times 10 to the power of minus 7. So we saw how we had two different methods to work out time of flight. Okay, let's try another question. If you want, you can pause the video and give it a go. So in this question, we've been given the time of flight of the Q82 ion, and we want to work out the time of flight of the 86 ion. So again, we have another scenario where we know the time of flight for one ion and we have to work out the time of flight for the second one. That means we can use our equation. So remember, time squared of x divided by mr of x equals time squared of y divided by mr of y. We'll use 82 as x and 86 as y. So the time of 82 squared divided by the MR of 82, which is basically 82, equals the time of 86 squared, divided by the MR of 86, which is 86. Remember, we want to work out this. So the first thing we're going to do is square root both sides. So that removes the squared function on the time. Next, bring this over here. So now all we need to know is the time for 82, which is here. So we can plug in the time for 82 from the question and we get the following. And this gives us an answer of 1.23 times 10 to the power of minus five seconds. Okay, another type of question. In this question, we've only got one ion, 25. And it's not asking to work out the time for the second ion. Instead, we want to work out the distance of the flight tube. So first we're going to write kinetic energy equals half mv squared and speed or velocity equals distance over time. Since we want to work out distance, let's rearrange the equation so that velocity times time equals distance. We know time already, however, we don't know velocity. So we can work it out by rearranging the top equation, giving us the following. So they've given us the energy, so we can plug that into our equation. As for mass, remember, we're going to use our formula that we made in the beginning, which was 1 over Avogadro's constant times mR over 1,000. In this case, so that goes in nicely in here. Now the mR is for 25. So we're going to put 25 where it says mR. Putting all of this into the calculator, it's going to give us the following answer for velocity. We can plug that into here and times it with time, which is this number. And that will give us a distance of 2.13 meters.
Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.